The most important and longest lasting relationship I will ever have is the one I have with myself. Every other relationship comes and goes, even marriages that last until death do us part eventually end, and the only person I will ever be with is myself. My love for you will last forever. So, how is this relationship going? Do I want to get up in the morning? Isn't it great to be here? Is it fun to hang out with me? Do I appreciate my thoughts? Do I make myself laugh? Do I appreciate my body? Is it enough for me to be alone? How can I have a good relationship with someone else if I don't have a good relationship with myself? If I don't love myself, I will always be looking for someone to complete me, make me happy, and help me achieve my goals. Being needy is the most effective way to attract a failed relationship. According to author Wayne Dyer, any relationship in which two people become one results in half people. You see, expecting the other person to fix your life or be your better half sets you up for failure. Before you enter a relationship, you should be completely satisfied with yourself. Also, if you are in a relationship with someone who does not love himself or herself, you will never be good enough for someone insecure, frustrated, jealous, self-loathing, or resentful. Too often, we exhaust ourselves trying to be good enough for partners who have no idea how to accept our love because they don't love themselves. What we attract always reflects the qualities or beliefs we hold about ourselves and our relationships. What others think of us reflects their limited view of life. We need to understand that life has always loved us unconditionally. Envious people are extremely insecure. They have no regard for themselves. They have no belief in their worth. Jealousy essentially says I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy of love. So I'm sure my partner will cheat on me or leave me for someone else. This incites rage and blame. Staying with a jealous person implies that you do not deserve a loving relationship. It's frequently the same with spousal abusers. They either grow up in a family where abuse is normal and simply continue the family pattern or they do not. Alternatively, they blame the world and their partners for their lack of self-esteem. Abusers will never stop abusing unless they receive therapy. Abusers are almost always accompanied by a parent. They are deeply resentful of forgiveness, which is a critical issue for them. They must be aware of their patterns and willing to change. All of my relationships are influenced by the relationships I had with my parents. I was astounded when I first learned of this. Years ago, I attended Sandra's Loving Relationship Workshop, expecting to learn how to attract a loving relationship. I was shocked to learn that we would be working on our relationships with our parents. However, by the end of the workshop, I realized that the reason I had so many problems in my relationships was due to the very difficult childhood I had, the abuses my mother and I had endured, the abandonment and lovelessness of my childhood, all of which had transferred into my current relationships. It's no surprise that I attracted abusive men. It's no surprise they always abandoned me. It's no surprise that I have always felt unloved and unwanted. It's no surprise that I always seemed to have bosses who terrified me. I was simply putting into practice what I had learned as a child. That was a crucial workshop for me. I let go of a lot of resentment and learned to work on forgiveness. My relationship with myself improved dramatically and I never again attracted an abusive man. So instead of wasting our time saying men are bad or women are bad, let's take a look at the relationships we had with our parents or the relationships our parents had with each other. As an example, what are your current grievances against the men and women in your life? Consider how you would react. He never, he always. She never, she always. Men do. Women will not. Is this how your mother or father treated you? Is this how your mother treated your father or does this describe your father's treatment of your mother? How was love expressed in your home when you were a child? To resolve deep-seated fears about a relationship, you may need to go back to your childhood relationship with your father or mother. What do you have to give up to be in a relationship? How do I lose myself in a relationship? What messages did I receive as a child that led me to believe that relationships are difficult? 
Confirm your love for yourself. Perhaps you have a difficult time setting boundaries and people take advantage of you. You could be sending the message that I don't value and respect myself and that it's okay to abuse and take advantage of me. But this does not have to be the case any longer because you began today to affirm your love and respect for yourself. Respect for yourself. Look in the mirror often and tell yourself, I love you. As simple as it appears, this is a very powerful healing affirmation. Your relationships will begin to reflect this love and respect as you grow in self-love. You might want to think about joining a support group like Codependents Anonymous or Alanon. These are wonderful groups that will help you establish boundaries in your relationships and reconnect with your inner self-love and respect. Look in your phone book for a group near you. I believe that we all have comfort zones in our interpersonal relationships. These comfort zones develop when we are very young. If our parents treated us with love and respect, we will associate this with being loved. If our parents were unable to treat us with love and respect, as was the case for many of us, we learn to accept this lack of acceptance. To meet our needs and feel loved and cared for, we associate being mistreated with being loved. This becomes a pattern for us. As a pattern develops in childhood, it becomes the pattern we use unconsciously in all of our relationships. There is no gender bias in the belief pattern that being treated badly equals love. This type of dysfunctional pattern, I believe, is more prevalent in women. Because women are culturally encouraged to express vulnerability, they are more willing to admit when their lives aren't working. However, this is changing as more men become willing to reconnect with their vulnerability. Robin Norwood's Women Who Love Too Much is an excellent relationship book. I also recommend Barbara D'Angela's audio cassette album Making Relationships Work. I open my heart to love, and I am safe, which is an affirmation for all of us. We do all of our important work by ourselves. Wanting your mate to change is a subtle form of manipulation, a desire to have power over him or her, and it may even be self-righteousness because it implies that you are superior to him or her. Allow your life partners to be who they want to be and encourage their self-exploration, self-discovery, self-love, self-acceptance, and self-worth. If you were looking for a mate, I recommend making a list of all the qualities you want this person to have and don't limit yourself to tall, dark, and handsome or cute, blonde, and pretty. Make a list of all the qualities you desire, then go over this list and see how many of these characteristics you have. Are you willing to invest in developing the ones you don't have? Then ask yourself what it is within you that is denying or delaying this person's attraction to you. Are you willing to change your mind? Is there a part of you that still thinks you are unlovable or unworthy of love? Is there a habit or a belief that keeps love at bay? Is there a part of you that says, I never want this? I won't fall in love because I have a marriage like my parents. Perhaps you are feeling isolated. It is difficult to feel connected to others when we are mostly disconnected from ourselves. In this case, you should devote some quality time to yourself right now. Make yourself your best friend. Rediscover what brings you joy, what you enjoy doing, and pamper and spoil yourself. We frequently look to others to make us feel loved and connected, when all they can do is reflect our relationship with ourselves. What do you believe you are entitled to in an intimate relationship? When we come from a place of feeling, how can we ever get what we truly desire? It usually indicates that our belief system supports not deserving. Is this what you truly believe about yourself, that you can't have what you truly desire? This particular mental pattern does not have to be true for you. You can start making a change right now. Make a list of things you believe about men, women, love, marriage commitment, fidelity, trust, and children. These lists will reveal any negative beliefs that need to be changed. Some of the messages hidden in your consciousness may surprise you. Clean them out. And you might be surprised at how different your next relationship will be. It's worth noting that most psychics report that the majority of their clients ask at least one of three questions. Psychics are frequently asked the same questions. How can I find a partner? How can I end a relationship? 
How can I increase my finances if you are in a relationship that you want to get out of? Use that all-powerful tool blessing with love, affirm. I bless you with love, and I release you. You are free, and I am free. This should be done frequently. Then be very clear about what you do want in a relationship. Make a list if necessary. Meanwhile, work on loving yourself constantly, and love and accept the other person completely as they are. One of two things will happen automatically as you change and grow on the inside. The other person will either align with your desires or disappear entirely. If they disappear from your life, this transition will be painless. Always begin with self-love and appreciation. Everything else will be different. Using the affirmation, I now realize how wonderful I am. I choose to enjoy and love myself. It is critical to clean up and resolve old relationships before committing to a new one. If you are constantly talking about or thinking about your previous love, you are not yet free to enter the new one. We may deify our previous love to protect ourselves from being vulnerable in the present moment. In her book, she describes a return to love. Marianne Williamson shares this excellent barometer for our decisions. She claims that in every interaction, we are either moving towards or away from love to be completely happy and alive. We want to make decisions in our lives that lead us to love. As you work to overcome the obstacles that are impeding your relationship, experiment with being your lover. Give yourself the gift of romance and love. Prove to yourself how unique you are. Take care of yourself. Give yourself small tokens of kindness and appreciation. Purchase flowers for yourself. Surround yourself with pleasing colors, textures, and scents. Life always reflects to us what we are feeling on the inside. The right person to share your growing sense of intimacy will be drawn to you like a magnet as your inner sense of love and romance grows. Most importantly, you will not have to give up any of your intimacy to be with that person. When an affair ends, it is common for us to fall into the I'm not good enough routine and punish ourselves. We believe this because the other person no longer wishes to spend time with us. There must be something wrong with us and we frequently experience deep despair. However, it is not true that there is something wrong with us. Every relationship is a learning experience. We get together for a short time. For as long as we can, we share energy and experiences. We learn what we can together and then it is time to part ways. This is perfectly normal and natural. Avoid the pain of partying by not clinging to an old romantic relationship. Don't put up with physical or emotional abuse just to be with someone. Clinging to old experiences will never lead to a fulfilling life. When we allow ourselves to be disrespected, we are saying, I am not worthy of love, so I must stay here and accept this behavior. I can't stand being alone with myself and I'm pretty sure I will never find another relationship. These negative affirmations depress you. Instead, pay attention to the signals. When a relationship ends, life allows you to try something new. This can be a time for deep gratitude, acknowledging the good times you had together and appreciating all of the learning experiences, after which you can let go of that relationship with love and move on with your life. This is the time to love yourself tenderly and understandingly. This is not the end of the world for you. It's the beginning of a new phase of self-love. This new chapter in your life has the potential to be far more wonderful than the one you've just finished. Affirmations for your relationships. I've come here to discover that there is only love. I'm realizing how wonderful I am. I choose to appreciate and appreciate myself as a magnificent creation of a loving God. I am infinitely loved and accept it now. I am ready and willing to be in a wonderful loving relationship by thinking positive loving thoughts. I establish a loving and supportive relationship. I welcome love into my heart. It is safe for me to express my feelings of love. Everyone gets along with me. There is joy and laughter wherever I go. I speak from the bottom of my heart. People adore me and I adore them. I'm at peace with life. I have always had the ideal partner in my life. My love for myself keeps me safe and secure. I have a good relationship with life. Life adores me and I am secure. 
I encircle everyone in my life in a circle of love regardless of gender. I include my friends, family, co-workers, and anyone from my past. I affirm that I have wonderful harmonious relationships with everyone in which mutual respect and care are shown on both sides. I live in dignity, peace, and joy. I broaden my circle of love to encompass the entire planet. And this love multiplies within me. There is unconditional love within me and I express it to everyone. My unconditional love includes me because I know I am worthy of being loved. I adore and value myself. That is correct.